Genius. It's the swingingest place in town. Club Genius. Your IQ will come around from green to brown, from up to down, from Stalingrad to Vegas. Hey, open up them pearly gates for Club Genius. Look out. Hey, seven pillars of Club Genius. When I hear the word culture, I reach for my TV guy. I reach for my TV. I reach for Club Genius. You only place to be. Hey, Club Genius. The only show to see. Mary had a little lamb. Louisiana had food stamp fraud. And you've got Club Genius. No cattle mutilations here. Club Genius. Advance to the rear at Club Genius. Club Genius. Club Genius. Welcome to Club Genius, starring Rudy Cheeks. Rudy's guests tonight are the Incredible Casuals, David Greenberger and Ken Eglin from the Duplex Planet, Blind Stuff Shells and Sigillian John Malak discuss the history of the Italian blues, and a visit from Ajax Vesugian. And now, here's the star of Club Genius, Rudy Cheeks! <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you very much, and uh, <clears throat> welcome to the show. Um, we've been uh, criticized for being tasteless and immature, and I guess it's kind of true, but um, this week we decided to inject a little bit of culture to the opening of the show. So I'm going to read a poem, and uh, since we have uh, David Greenberger and Ken Eglin from the Duplex Planet on tonight's show, we uh, decided to read a poem from the Duplex Planet magazine entitled Chinese Food by Ernest Noyes Brookings. <laughs> Chinese food, orient all over earth, usual menu chop suey and chow mein. The nutritious prices all the worth can produce articles in the rain. <laughs> At one Chinese restaurant, guest two chow mein. Waiter, I will ratify your choice. Suggest that you sing a tonal refrain, knowing for this purchase a special voice. At China Bell, between Jamaica Plain and Dedham, guest to waiter, two Chinese macaroni. Waiter to guess, others have fed him, and not that it will not be phony. In an oriental food mart, guest to waiter, two Chinese chop sueys, waiter, this food has sufficient tart, but not a nourishment screwy. <laughs> In a Scandinavian food cafe, one guest to waiter, serve as per menu. Waiter, I will come right away, and know the savory food will be tender. In a pagoda in eastern China, one guest to another, enjoy oriental rice? Answer, yes, it will be served in the diner at an extremely low food price. <laughs> Near Times Square, New York City, guest to waiter, delicious Chinese food. Waiter, yes, as you have no pity, it will be served in the crude. <laughs> Chinese Food by Ernest Noyes Brooking. Now, we have a bunch of guests here tonight, and uh, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Well, actually, I want to take up about, what, 53 minutes more of your time, okay? So uh, we'll be right back in just a second. We're going to go to a commercial. Is that it? We're going to go to a commercial. This was actually paid for. <laughs> to Leo's Bar and Restaurant in Providence, Rhode Island, where the elite of New England society dine regularly. You will be served by our gracious staff of waitresses who will see that you are given every courtesy. Our food, which will addict you, is made from the finest materials and all our meals are prepared on the premises. 
Our professional bartenders, Gus and Zippy, mix the most delightful drinks, and you will frequently come back for more. Yes, it's Leo's Bar and Restaurant in downtown Providence. Our cup runneth over. Welcome back, and uh, we have the distinct privilege right now to introduce you to our very special musical guest for this evening from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, the Incredible Casuals, right over here, the Incredible Casuals. Come, the incredible casuals. I gotta tell you something right now. Hey, the set's falling. <laughs> you know what? We're having some technical difficulties. Hard to believe, but we have some technical difficulties. Whoa! Look out. <laughs> the guys in the band are being assaulted by the set hey, right now. <laughs> whoa! Hey, whoa! I can't believe it, boy. Everything is just seems to be going wrong out here at Club Genius. Is this genius? No way! Okay, let's try to get down that list of difficulties right now. A, we blew a fuse. Is that true? B, I assume we're still on the air. Is that true? Good assumption. Okay. We're still on the air. A, we blew a fuse. Then, guess what? As my friend Chucky, who used to put his hand in front of his face, say, guess what? All the time in front of everything. Guess what? F, can we interview the band? Sure. Come on out here, guys. Let's bring the band back. The casuals. We're going to talk to them for a few minutes. Technical difficulties. Come on out here, guys. Oh, yeah. All right, just clip on these lavalier mics. So there we go. There's another one over there behind you. Yeah. There well. we go. Oh, what to do when we have technical difficulties? Here, guys, why don't you, Junior, you can try that right here. Where's the bullhorn? I don't know. Gee. What a time. Well, anyway, number one, we blew a fuse. The lights are gone out, so if it's kind of dark on your TV screen, it's not your TV set. Don't worry about it. People who run this TV station, you better worry about it. <laughs> worry about it right real fast, okay? Um, then uh, what happened? Then we lost the monitor, and the monitor went, so the song was prematurely interrupted. Short. short, another short circuit, I think. That's right, Steve, I think it's another short. And then after that, the set fell apart and almost killed <laughs> Vince, the drummer. But Vince is a tough guy. So guys, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience out here? Uh, I'm Chandler. 
I'm Junior. This is Junior, and uh, I'm Steve, and this is my friend Vince. Vince, okay. Chandler, Junior, Steve, and Vince, the incredible casuals. Ooh, back on this camera, that's good. <laughs> well, guys, uh, it sounds cool. We're getting some. Do you guys also do uh, Steely, Dan. Steely Dan records? Huh? Do you guys do Steely Dan tunes? Pretty much Steely Dan, Ann Murray, you know, whatever comes along. Whatever the kids are listening to. And uh, you, uh, you obviously uh, uh, work for the kids. We work for the kids. We work to the kids. I think you got to work the kids. You got, how, how well, how, have you been working the kids well? Uh, in... we've been, yeah, we've been, we work them well. We work them hard, but we work them well. We work them late, but we work them... Nice. <laughs> That's the way I like to hear it. Oh, we just went off the air for a second. I found out. <laughs> it wasn't because we were this. talking about kids, was it? We we're talking about. It's probably because we we're talking about kids, and of course, there are laws against this kind of thing. I think you recall uh, Chuck Berry went to prison for something uh, along these lines. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna kill a few lives. You guys all sat here in the studio. Okay, guys, we're going to make check sure David over here running around like mad. Pretty tough when you're operating a camera, but uh, seems to have things under control now. And we were talking with the incredible casuals about the kids. Kids today. Kids today. Hey, there's something for kids like. It's the rock and roll. All right. And the kids. Is there... Do you That's our song. Hey. All right, well, that, that, that's something. That, now, do you think, uh, for instance, Steve, the kids today are different from the kids of yesteryear? I think they are different. Mostly, mostly younger. Shorter. I think. Younger and shorter. Just so much younger than Younger and shorter. Well, you yeah. know, the, I think there is some scientific uh, evidence to possibly question that uh, concept of them being shorter. I think that they, yeah. they're alleged to be taller, but they seem to be shorter to you guys. Well, I don't think it's that we're getting taller, although Vince might be, but the rest, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think people are getting shorter. I think it's the new thing. And, now, this is for short people as well as tall. This is the, uh, this is your album. Can you guys tell us a little bit about the album? This is the Incredibles, the Incredibles, <laughs> I'm screwed up right, the Incredible Casuals album. A lot of people just call us the Incredibles. Well, I, I think it's pretty incredulous, uh, and uh, this is uh, this is a terrific record. This is from my own personal record collection. Can you guys, tell me a little bit something about the songs on this record. That's our Summer Fun Maxi EP. We released that in September, I think, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much of a summer project. It's got eight great songs that uh, young people love and kids too. Today's kids. Today's, Today's kids. kids. Yeah, the short ones. The short ones from today. Well, you know, I was once a kid. Hard to believe. I was once short. I'm still short, but I'm 6'2 lying down. I know a lot of people are... Uh, <laughs> have, uh, <laughs> let's say, oh, I was get a blast of that. I need attention. <laughs> but, uh, my ball spot show? Oh, what? Oh, over there. Okay, here we are. We're back over here. My ball spot. I'm, I'm open about it. I'm honest about it. But, um... <laughs> Okay, so my interview technique is lacking. So what? Who cares, huh? This is my show. <laughs> I can do what I want. It's a cable. Um, I think you should do your own thing, you know. I would do my own thing, but instead of my own thing now, uh, another point, kids, don't use these cheap razors, right? <laughs> so what happened to this? Lip got cut. Want to zoom in on that art there? My lip that's cut. Zoom yeah. in. Yeah. Nasty gash. Oh, that's Nasty gash. Okay, what, you want to try it again? Okay, Tom. What do you think? Should we do the first song or the next song? The first song. Let's try the first song again, guys. Go ahead back there. Unplug yourselves, and we'll try the first song all over again. The Incredible Casuals are going to give it another go for the kids. The short kids, today's kids. That's right, the Incredible Casuals for today's short kids. Here we go. Yeah, yeah might as well leave it there. Okay, there we go, guys. This time we should be able to get all the action we need, Steve. Yeah, just unplug that and leave it there on the uh, on that beautiful chair. That's right. All right, we're gonna have the incredible casuals for you in just another second. As soon as they get queued up, are we about ready in there in the control booth? We're just about ready, gang. All right. We're doing the exact same thing right over again. They're gonna do the exact same thing over again, but better. All right. That's what I like to hear. The Incredible Casual.
Picnic Ape, the Incredible Casuals. Picnic Ape, the Incredible Casuals. Let's hear it for him. Yeah. Let's hear it for him. All right. The Incredible Casuals. What a time. All right. Holy cow. Hold on. We got a show to do, folks. Please. Please. We've got a show to do. Hold it back, please. Okay. Picnic Ape, the Incredible Casuals. Boy, that was incredible. Now, what are we doing? We're just sitting around here. You want me to talk? I want to talk to the guys again. Hey, let's have them do another number. What do you say? Let's do another number. You guys are about ready? You got to get your guitars. Okay, let's see if we can stall for a few minutes and get their guitars. I'd like to show you some of my musical talent while we're stalling here. Okay, uh, Chandler's going to change his shirt. They're going to get their guitars. And, uh,. This is the way it is in showbiz. Tom, uh, any suggestions of what we should probably do to stall while these guys are uh, kind of screwing up the entire uh, show? Well, <laughs> not, not, nothing personal, but uh, they're going to get them. They're going to be all set. There they are. Yeah, let's see, let's see what they're doing out there. In the, can we take a look at the card and see what the heck these guys are doing out there? What is that? Okay, there they are. Oh, they've got their guitars. That's good. There's a very good sign. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's beautiful. I love this. I love this live TV. I love the way it works. I love the way I look on it. Look at that. Burn out a camera with that shine. <laughs> That's what they tell me anyway. Uh, okay. Let's go, huh? Let's go. The incredible casuals. Let's go. Casuals. Let's go, the incredible casuals. All right, let's really hear it for them. Let's blast that out there. The incredible casuals. What a bunch of beautiful guys, the incredible casuals. Thanks a lot, guys. That was great. I know those songs are bound to be hits with the kids and everybody else out there, including our next two guests who are coming to you from the Duplex Planet. That's the Duplex Nursing Home in Jamaica Plains, Massachusetts. And uh, we have here David Greenberger and Ken Eglin. Now, for just a few minutes, uh, possibly, Dave, you could tell me a little bit about uh, the Duplex Nursing Home and the Duplex Planet. Yep. Uh, the Duplex Planet is a monthly magazine of interviews on a different subject each month, ranging from, here's a, here's a stack, ranging from uh, 
guitars to uh, cowboys, uh, cavemen, saxophones, <laughs> all different subjects. Each month, the residents at the nursing home talk about the different subjects. Some of them, Ernest Noyes Brookings writes poems on the different sure. subjects, right. his food, mm -hmm. and uh, Right, the poem that I read uh, earlier was an Ernest Noyes Brookings poem, and uh, he's a regular contributor to the Duplex Planet with his poetry. And uh, David has brought with us uh, from Duplex Nursing Home uh, Ken Eglin, who is the music reviewer. And uh, Ken, what do you think of the Incredible Casuals? You listen to that? Very well. They're very nice. I like it. You like the music? Yes, I do. Yeah, let me find you. Ken's Corner here. Ken's yeah. Corner is uh, Ken's. Uh, Sample is Ken's uh, yeah a sample of Ken's work here. Ken uh, uh, listens to records and then uh, reviews them for the magazine. And uh, we thought we'd talk to Ken a little bit about uh, some of the uh, well some some different musical trends and uh, musicians that uh, he's enjoyed over the years. Um, Ken, what do you think about? Let's let's talk to you a little bit about Elvis Presley, who was uh, real big in the fifties. What do you think about Elvis? Very wonderful. He was very very wonderful. One of the greatest that I have met. I think the boy, I, I miss him. I really do miss that man. Mm. He's, uh, yeah, he died just a few years ago, right? Please don't use that phrase. All right. <laughs> 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 well, he was Boot Hill. Okay, Boot Hill. <laughs> he said Boot Hill, but Elvis? He was one of the greatest. And his voice was? Something beyond, I, I can't express it. He was simply out of this world. He was great. The man was simply great. Honest, I'm glad you can. I don't think of anybody. I don't think of anybody today that would touch him. I don't. I doubt it. Well, now there's a boy, a young boy, from Australia. Tom Jones is trying, but he cannot reach. How we? He volunteer. That boy volunteer. It will stay until somebody comes along, which we have doubt, but they may be. Well, of course, you know, Ken. In the '60s, uh, the Beatles were all the rage. What do, you, what do you have anything to say about the Beatles? Oh, the Beatles were simply great. They were just really great, and I can't understand why. Everybody says. I was a fan of the Beatles. We got three or four people that make that statement, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened to the Beatles, sir? I can't. They don't come back. No, they won't come back. Uh, Ringo, he is set for life. I know that in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, he has got it. He's got it made. Mm -hmm. Where will McCarty go? I don't know. Yeah. Now he's trying his best. But give him a chance, give him a chance, you get up there. Mm -hmm. They all will get there, some way. Because they all stick together. And they still think of Al. Al. Mm -hmm. And of course the Beatles, they, they're, not, they're not from this country at all, right? Now that's what puzzles me. <laughs> I thought they come from me. I saw them on TV in different outfits. Mm -hmm. English outfits, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought they, well, I could remember. Then I found out Elwick El El comes from Brown. Now, uh, man, Tennessee, uh, yeah. down south. Well, I guess they all come down there. I don't know. Yeah, so the Beals, they figured they came up from down south. Man, the they are good. They were great. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were simply great. Remember any of their songs? Uh, Oh, I know, I tell you something. Tell you something. Mm. Well, I don't have any El uh, any of the Beatles songs right here, but uh, maybe another uh, musician that I know that you're familiar with that some of the younger viewers out there probably don't know about, somebody like Lester Young, for instance. Oh, come on, please, now that's daddy. Don't talk about him. <laughs> that is, ain't nobody else, ain't nobody's really said that man. He was simply terrific. Oh, yeah, that was, I was boys with horns, but first was it. He was just simply it. I can't ever understand why. I asked him one day, how can you blow that thing 
but the sweet milk going in your hand. <laughs> and he just looked at me, boy, let me tell you something. I said, go back, go, go, go. <laughs> hey, he was out of his world. Now, plus there's something that God you have to love. Just talking to him. He's an asshole. He will laugh. He was quick to do it once in a while. Not too well. But him and that, this, that hat of his. Mm. There's only one man that wears that hat in the world, and that's him. No matter where you go, you see that hat. You turn around the corner, there's that hat. Yes, you know who it is. It's press. Right under the hat. Mm-hmm. That's right, pork pie hat, right? Yeah, yes, indeed. There you go. And you get that horn with him. Can you go to rehearsal. Mm -hmm. But he was pressed. Run, run into him down the streets now and then, uh, Ken? Maybe. I don't play with it. I don't play with Boot Hill. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. It has nothing to do with Boot Hill. Now, uh, Presley did his time. He did his stretch. He made, he made his record. He pulled his horn right. He had the world. He had the United States right where he wanted. Like all the other boys. Oh, yeah, got a few other boys. They got the world. Got them right there. Yeah, well, you, you will hear, hear some of those boys come up for you. Yes, you will. Mm. Well, any other any other horn players that you heard? I mean, nobody's going to touch uh, Prez, but uh, any of these other uh, horn players you heard that you really like, Ken? Yeah. Well, one that I like very much, he passed away on me. But I can't understand why people think Harry Dane made I Cry People. Mm. No, no, that's wrong. Harry and Dane, that was, he grabbed it. But the man who made that song is Buddy Berman. Buddy Berman? Not Buddy Berman, it's that What's it? Buddy Bolton. Buddy Bolton. As David, our cameraman, happens to be a jazz expert, of course, and it says Buddy Bolton? That's Buddy Bolton, right, Ken? Is that, is that the guy? No, no, not Buddy Bolton. <laughs> Forget it, Dave. Okay, look, we, <laughs> we're going to cut to a commercial right now. We'll be right back with Ken and Dave from the Duplex Plan. <laughs> <laughs> Announcing the real Girl Scouting. That's Girl Scouting? That's Girl Scouting. Really? Really! The Real Girl Scouting, now playing at your local Girl Scout Council. Okay, we're back here, Club Genius, and uh, we're back with uh, David Greenberger and Ken Eglin from the Duplex Planet, Duplex Ma Magazine. And take a, a, a quick look here with the uh, camera. This is a picture of Ken and his column in the Duplex Planet, uh, Ken's Corner, which is a uh, his music reviews. And basically what happens... Uh, David, can you tell me uh, how, the, how the column is done? I just uh, prepare a tape of different songs, and Ken listens to them, gives me his comments, and I write it down, and that's it. Okay, well, that's... that's uh, mm -hmm. um, what we'd like to do now is I've made a, a tape of a few songs here, and we want to have Ken listen to them and tell us what he thinks of this and see if he can do somewhat what he does for uh, the duplex plan. He had to do kind of an instant review of this music, okay? So we're going to play a, play a number right now and see what uh, Ken has to say about it. Ken, take a listen to this, okay?
one shortcut, Ken, and uh, what, do you, what do you have to say about that music there? Pardon me. Is that my country or your country? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that's coming more from your country, Ken, you know what I mean? <laughs> I have no country. You have no country? <laughs> the man without a country, Ken Eggers. <laughs> no, sir. No, Ken, yeah. I don't know, that's come, that sounds like it's coming from a whole different country to me, but you know, what, what do you think of that? What, what, what'd you hear? Well, to me, it sounds more like the Chinese. Some sounds Chinese, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's Ornette Coleman, who's from Texas originally, and he's a, he's a sax player from Texas. All right. Now, you hear that coming from Texas at all? No, wait. They don't come like that from Arizona. I don't know, how can it come from Texas? <laughs> you tell me that. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's, let, well, let's listen to another cut here and see what you, see what you think about this one here. Uh, that cut now. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Ken? What? I've heard that song before. No, that one. That, they don't play that on the radio much. That's that's from back 1967 or so. 67. 67. Oh, baby, listen. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I was I was I was in this world. I was on another planet. I was on another planet. <laughs> I swear to God, I was on another planet. Yeah. 67, yes, I was on another planet. You were on another planet in 67? Yes, I was. Well, Ken, I mean, that's, uh, thinking about the space program now, I don't think that was right. What, what, what planet, you know, what planet was that? I mean, no. Uh, on the other side of Mars. Um, on the other side of Mars. On the other side of Mars. Yeah. So you didn't catch this song at that time. <laughs> no, no way. This was not what was going on on the radio on Mars. No, I don't think so. No. That wasn't the beam. Okay, let's try one more here and uh, see what Ken, uh, this is, from this planet. Ken, what do you think about that one? That's, uh, where do you think that one's coming from? That's probably from Dave's band. That's probably from Dave's band. Yes. Uh, interestingly enough, Dave, uh, of course, got a band called, um, called Men and Volts, and of course, uh, their music does sound quite similar to this, and, uh, mm. but it's, uh, it's actually, that's Captain Beefheart and his magic band from about 1970. And they're from, uh, Los Angeles area, live out in the desert. Oh, boy, I miss them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that ex explains anything, but, uh, well, maybe it doesn't explain anything. Maybe it explains plenty. But uh, anyway, we've, uh, uh, glad to have you here, Ken. 
And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to hear you talk about music. Ken Eckler and David Greenberg. Dave, okay? thank you. From Duplex Nursing Home, Duplex Planet. And uh, right now, hold on just a second, Ken. We'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll be all set in just a minute. I think we're going to go to a tape. Is that right? Okay, right now, we're going to go to a tape. And uh, Lainey Kenefek talking about her art. Okay, we're going to introduce you now to the visual world of Mary Elaine Kenefek. So, Lainey, take it away. Tell us about some of these uh, paintings and drawings. Okay, this is, um, well, usually I decide to draw a picture according to things that happen to me or things that I think about are going to happen to me or things that I would like to happen to me. But this is a, um, a drawing that I did last year of me um, jumping off a building. But most people think that it's suicidal, but I, I think, oh, I never think about the landing, so I don't really think of it as suicidal. I just think of it as fun to be in the air. So I, um, people were, were like starting to give me trouble about always drawing myself falling out the window or jumping out the window. So I decided that I would Ignore, well, I would try to get over jumping off windows. So I did this picture of myself um, ignoring the arrow that's pointing out the window that actually exists in my apartment. It's, it's a shadow that um, is formed in the window because the window's inset like this and it's round. And there's these two big arrows pointing out the window like that, which is disturbing mm -hmm. since I discovered it like long after I drew all these pictures of um, me jumping out the window. A few things followed through from these drawings with the spray paint in the hands. And uh, one was this next drawing, which is supposed to be Princess Grace dead in a vegetable garden, which I got the idea for when I was reading the official report of um, Princess Grace and when she got in the car accident and said that the car rolled over the embankment and crashed and burned before coming to rest in the vegetable garden. So I like that expression of Princess Grace coming to rest in a vegetable garden. So I drew this picture of her in the vegetable garden. But people, I thought, I thought of it as a nice ending. But other people thought that it, it was really morbid. But I disagree. <laughs> well, it could, could be that idea that you know Princess Grace, you know, in vegetables, you know, there's, there was that implication too when they claimed she was alive for a few days with no brain activity. Oh no. <laughs> So that's my, my news media painting. So next, I was reading the paper again, which I get a lot of my ideas from. And it was a Sunday paper, and there was this frame in Prince Valiant, that one that no one ever reads, I don't think. And uh, it was of this mastiff that was going to attack this um, prince person. So I did a, I did a, a drawing, and it's pretty, it's pretty different, though. And the, my favorite thing about, well, I kind of like that the hands are glowing, and all the people in the past thought that the hands are red because the dog already bit the person whose hands they were, and they got blood on them. But the, my favorite thing about it is that the eyes are, uh, one eye is black with a white dot, and one eye is white with a black dot, which I didn't even mean to do. It just came out that way. So then I decided that I would do different color hands, so I did, from the red hands, I went to the green hands, and that's my cat who I think it would be really funny to hang over water like that and see <laughs> That's supposed to be a funny picture. Like, I wish that people would <laughs> think that um, that's so it's terrible. Funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no, also somebody said that it looked like um, E.T. hands. And was I going to do a whole series on uh, E.T. hands? But I never saw it. <laughs> I never saw that movie. I'm glad to see it. So then I went to the eye doctors and I decided to do a drawing about that because I had a glaucoma test and they put these eye drops in your eye that makes your eye, um, have you ever had one? No. They put these eye drops in your eye that anesthetize the eyeball and then they tell you that they're going to press this little pointer against your cheek but I knew that that wasn't what they were doing because I know what a glaucoma test is and they press it against your eyeball to test the eye pressure. So I could, whenever I get really nervous and I'm in a chair like that, I start to laugh and I look like I'm some kind of crazy person just, just laugh. But this doctor was sticking a needle in my eye, so I drew a picture of it. Excellent. 
and then this is down here on the floor, that question mark whistle balloon. Thing. It's a number nine balloon. Um, <laughs> a number nine balloon. Yeah, well, it's one of these things like you blow oh, up and it spins have, around. I didn't even know if they had, oh, I know what you mean, yeah, I didn't even know that they existed. That's just smart I am. This, um, this was another one of the falling out the window pictures. This is Alaska, this character that comes up in my work in them. Um, came, who jumped out the window. But the most important thing about Alaska is that no matter what happens to her, she always has this big smile on her face. And so this person told me that this reminded them of the tower card in a, in a um, tarot deck, because it, it has like the same symbolism as, as the tower card. And they also said that it looked like the work of a primitive psychotic that was a compliment. And what about this giant bunny over here? I mean, this is this masterpiece. Well, that's my symbol. Um, they told me that I had to do bigger paintings because I kept doing really small paintings. So I decided that I would, that was a pretty innocuous reason why I should do bigger paintings. So I decided I would try to do a big painting of something that shouldn't be big or something that was so stupid that it would be really hard to make it look good big. So I did this um, bun here with the dramatic sky and I think. So the, this one teacher who was really conservative and didn't like my work all year really liked this, which was such a surprise because no one else, a lot of people really hate this. A lot of people won't talk about it because they think that it's just a big joke and that I'm just standing back here laughing while everyone's trying to seriously critique it. But isn't that kind of true? No. <laughs> okay. But uh, so this, I've drawn this thing around campus a lot, this symbol, because it's so simple. And uh, it was really nice because I had a crit with some graduate students and they had seen it around and they thought it was some kind of cult symbol and they they were really happy to find the source. They really liked it. They you thought. Join the cult. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know. Startling resemblance. Startling resemblance, I'd say. Lainey Kenefick, art student, painter, lunatic. Okay. <laughs> nice to have you. Nice to have that. Right now we have a couple more guests. I want to change my tape right here. Nobody gets on this show without applause. But we are, now I have our guests, two ethnomusicologists. Um, blind stuffed shells and Sicilian John Malacca. And uh, there they are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank nice you. to have you here. And uh, of course, you, you uh, want to... Nice to be here. That's it's, good. That's it's, good. It's, and uh, you feel like... Uh, it's like Italy. It's a lot like Italy in the studio, huh? What's uh, the, the... Warm feeling. A warm feeling. Well, it could be these cigars. It could be these very burning lights that just blew out earlier. But... Um, could be the uh, women, too. Could be the women too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you fellas are uh, experts in the history of Italian blues. Something That's I right. know a lot of people are not right. know very little about. What, what can you tell me about the Italian blues? You, you want to talk? You want me to talk? Talk. Oh, you start. Okay. Okay. It's nice. It's a nice. We got to. Nobody knows about Italian blues in this country. Everybody thinks the only blues are black and blue. But that makes up the man. Now what happened was the Italian blues that started in 1902 in Sicily, that's when there was the pasta famine. Oh, it was terrible. You couldn't get to no linguine, no mustachol. No bow ties. Either. No bow ties. No <laughs> nothing. Everybody was starving, you know? So you notice that when you listen to the black of blues in the history, He's always going to complain. Here's a woman who's a god, and he doesn't know what he's going to do to have with the fuck. See, no, it's at the place, you know, the, 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 the black. About the, the black. Let me tell you about the, the black. He always he sings too. about his power. That's, a, for example, uh, the first Italian Muslim mission was a, was a man named Pasta Bond. That was his Bons. name. That's where you were trying to like the macaroni belt. That's where the leather belly got his idea for his name. Basta Bonds. Uh, Basta Bonds. Hey, why don't you... Yeah, he's, he's you got, apparently say? there's uh, been a sound problem, problem here. I was just saying the first Italian blues musician was the name of Basta Bonds. 
That's a, that's a macaroni belly. And he was the one that had taught a leather belly how to sing. A leather belly went over to the house, and a leather belly ate too much of lasagna. You know, oh, he says, my lord, my belly is like a lead. Pastor the fans that says, that's your name. But all the time, anyway, the, the Italian musicians and my friends are going to talk, we sing about a, we sing about a, the, the, the food. You see, for example, a, a modern song that we made up together, we sing a little bit of few. That's called the, the Raggle Blues. So what happened is this guy, he loses a woman, and now he can't make the homemade sauce. He got to have the sauce in the giants, and all good. It goes like this. I got the blues, uh, the oh. blues I can be. Uh, I got the blues. Uh, Sing it. Blues I can Sing be. Sing it, senor. Uh, I ain't got no homemade sauce uh, since my baby left me. You have a full time. Blues, uh, blues, blues all night long. Uh, I got the raggle blues. Uh, blues oh. all night long. Uh, ain't a hand oh, sweet sister. Life. Since that lady been gone. Aren't you glad? Like uh -huh. <laughs> okay, the homemade sauce blues. The... That's very interesting, guys. Um, I want to uh, tell you something. He's not really blind. He's not. This you mean? This is a, this no, guy's no. a fake? He's not. But the problem uh, is that what uh, well, all the clubs that we work in Italy, you, know, you can't see nothing, and you get in trouble. So that's the what. He started to say he was a blind. I got blind in Sicily. You got blind in Sicily. I, 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 it seems to me that you've been blind a few places in the States, too. <laughs> Possibly here tonight. I got the blind in Sicily, but but it wasn't. had nothing to do with work. No. No. I got blind for the same reason you almost went blind. I, I don't recall that incident, but... Uh, Your mother told you you go blind. Okay, yeah. I think I do recall the incident. <laughs> We call it with uh, some hesitation. Hey, maybe you could have got us a job, but we can't. You know, all we do is that we load the machines for some guy. A cigarette we pay a cigarette machine. machine. We can't get no worker because nobody who wants a blues a mandolin, a blues a concert. They show them how you play the blues a concert. Blues, blues a concert. Team. Yeah, show them how nice you play. You gotta get the like concert this. team. You know what the concert team is? Like oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you take it like that. Let's go. Oh, that's the rest, okay? That's enough. That's enough. You. He has a stroke. He's the man's a genius. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, uh, you guys, uh, you guys have been playing, and of course, study the art. Uh, any well, other? Uh, well, we we don't play too much in this country. We used to play in Italy. We used to play the heel to toe circuit. The heel and toe, heel to toe, back and forth. Back and forth. Let's make it a circuit. You call it the uh, Achilles uh, circuit, right? The, uh, the you know. well, falling arches. Falling arches. <laughs> that's the one who loses the job. Yeah, yeah that's a, it's a, it's a, it is a touching ballad. Um, now, uh, you, you fellas, uh, uh, what else can I say about you guys? <laughs> Very little, I guess. But um, any other insights in the in the history of the Italian blues? I mean, this is this is all new stuff to uh, our audience out there, of course, well, we to me as well, and uh, I think you know why. But um, well, you tell them where the blues are really come from. Go ahead. It, uh, well, well, the blues uh, comes from you know it comes from the basic human need to eat. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Italian of blues. The Italian, uh, the, the Italian of blues. You know? How far back is that the ghost? Back uh, to nine. Rome. You know, the, the first of blues were the Italian of blues. That's what they They're guess. the prototype, you know, and they built it in the Appian Way. Mm -hmm. The Romani had the, the slave. <laughs> yeah. They're putting the, putting the stone in. You had to sing. It's also the beginning of food, too, right? In Rome. Before that, people just kind of. Eight tree bark and uh, well, stones. Yeah. Stones. 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 The Egyptians, they were yeah, the more no good. They good. Ate no good. No good. That's, that's, well, that's right. like that's like you know a black man have a feel how. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got the the road song. The road song. That's right. Uh, on the way to lunch. On the way to lunch. Any uh, you got a, a good example of a road song? No. Old, no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't that's a so, different uh, tradition. That's a different. Did not. Uh, part of an oh, earlier time of tradition. Mm, I see. But we can tell you more about the, the modern blues. Pasta family. The pasta and, you know, family. it brings it back a lot of old world sorrow to think about the pasta family. It makes me think of my grandfather. You know, I don't know how old I am mm. because of my mother. She wrapped the last bit of pasta in my birth certificate. <laughs> take a wild guess at how old you are. Uh, let me take a, another guess, uh, IQ wise. Uh, <laughs> I'd say possibly double digits. No, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not speaking chronologically here, folks, but um, 
So, fellas, um, <laughs> this has been one of the most exciting thing, thrills I've had. Uh, it's nice we've had uh, someone, uh, a music reviewer, an actual band, and, of course, you guys here explaining the origins of uh, music. And I think I've had about enough of you guys because I don't believe a word of this stuff, okay? So let's get the hell these guys out of here. Let's get these guys out of here, huh? Yeah. All right, this is, there they are. Blind Stuff Shells and Sicilian John Malacca. Two of, uh... Two, two, I don't know what. Okay, two Italian bluesmen, masters of genius. Guys, it's great to have you here, and uh, thank you very much for enlightening us about the Italian blues. I know a lot of the Italian viewers out there are probably surprised as I was to hear this. And uh, right now, let's uh, let's let's go to. Uh, are we set? We're all set. Okay, we're gonna go to a tape right now. Ajax Bazusian, another adventure from Ajax Bazusian. Hello, sport fan, Ajax Basujian again, and you know, I am finding here in USA nothing getting excitement in people like their favorite games. Sports, you know, baseball, home runs, football, you got <laughs> touchdown, hockey with a slap shot, you name it, and thousands of fans would give right arm to be there. But over here would be hard pressed to find anybody ever hearing of a face shot or a slam nose dunk, or see a sight like this one. That's right, it is me riding high above crowd at Armenian New Year's Nose Bowl Parade. In fact, nose ball so popular in my country, every schoolboy has at least one hoop in the backyard, like this one. But like all sports, it takes great concentration, real psychology for great noseball play. It takes practice, sure, but it helps to be born with the right equipment. Take this beak, for instance. Belongs to great noseball rebounder Sneef Mazurkian, all Armenian right forward. Note the natural cradle of the pocket of the nose allows the tiny ball to slip in there securely while wide nasal cavity allows for thrust of air, putting topspin here. And that is a nose ball, my friend, you cannot stop, no matter what. Sure, sure, I'm talking a lot, but the real convincing thing is the excitement of one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go over to the court. workout. But before hitting the showers, I know a lot of you youngsters want to get started in your own nose ball league. Two important things first. First of all, look in the mirror. If in the middle of your face is something closely resembles tail fin of 57 Plymouth Fury, you got it made. But instead, if you are owner of Peter Pan style nose, you go out for golf maybe instead. And I know you kids are qualified who want to send away right away for my personalized nose ball practice kit. Works like this. You can do this all day long. You never have to bend over once, left or right. Works wonderful, comes in its own sturdy carrying case. So I see you next time when we learn about nose darts. So long, and remember this little Armenian phrase, it's not how big your nose is that really counts, it's what you got inside. Well, thank you very much, Aza Ajax Bazuzian. Let's hear it for him. What a human being. Okay. We'd like to thank our other guests this week. Uh, of course, our uh, Italian blues experts, uh, Blind Stuff Shells and Sicilian John Malacca. And uh, incredible casuals. I don't know if they can hear me now, but that's our beautiful theme song. Let's listen now. And also, Dave Greenberger, Ken Eddie, myself, everybody here in the studio.